All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. Tonight, I want to uh, kind of touch on something that I've had for a while, but I've had several people message me asking me questions about, and that is my Monport M40. Uh, since I've got the machine, guys, I've done a lot of things to it to make it a little more user-friendly, a little more usable for what I do. Uh, keep in mind, this machine, I basically only use it for engraving uh, acrylics, cutting acrylics, uh, because it does have a small workspace. I can do, like little small engraves, I can do those on it, but to be honest with you, I'm a lot more comfortable with my diodes. So typically I do most of the engraving with the diodes, but for anything acrylic, the K40, or M40 in this case, it's kind of my go-to. Give me just a second, I'm gonna walk you through the upgrades that I've done, the things that I've found about the machine that I didn't like, and so, I've changed it and it is now my Clactical M40. Okay guys, just to point something out, I just recently got this uh, chiller from uh, Amazon. Uh, it's the Monport CW3000. It's the one they recommend for this machine. Uh, of course, me and Steve have found out it actually doesn't have any refrigeration functions. It's more or less just a radiator that hooks to the machine to keep it cool. But so far, it's been doing a good job of keeping it uh, cool as long as your workspace isn't really, really hot. Uh, it's staying, right now, my coolant temperature is at 66 degrees, and I've been running it. Uh, power supply is at 72. Uh, but just want to show you that before I get any closer. All right, guys, so here it is. Uh, basically... I took the bed completely out of this machine, okay? The bed that was in there did not have a honeycomb. Uh, it was not movable. That tend to pose a lot of problems when I was trying to do different materials. I got myself a little small eight by 12 honeycomb in the event that I use it, but for acrylic, typically I find myself elevating the acrylic uh, and not using a honeycomb at all because I have found that a honeycomb can cause uh, marks, spotches, and uh, a lot of like gas damage to the acrylic, so basically when I'm doing acrylic, I take this guy out, so we'll go ahead and throw this to the side. All right, so I've got me a little stand back here that holds it. Uh, one thing that you will notice is I've changed the temperature gauges out. The ones that it came with were in Celsius, and I do not do Celsius. The ones that it came with also were battery powered, and it kept killing batteries and having to replace batteries. I got tired of messing with that, so I ordered these two off of Amazon replaced the ones that were in there. And in the process, I took off the stickers that made absolutely no sense and made my own that says power supply and cool it. And, and also put me a little degrees Fahrenheit right there so that folks would know. Uh, also, I have added the air assist. Uh, this air assist is actually the second one that I tried, but so far I like it better than I did the one I got before. Uh, this one, you can take the, the, the end off of it, clean it, put it back on without having to mess with the upper part, which is a, a big thing. You don't really want to go messing with this if you don't have to. Uh, when I put this on, of course, I did have to realign the, uh, the lenses toward the end there, uh, this one, and had to realign this. Took a little work, so if you start to do that, just be prepared, guys. It's a little tough. Uh, my work bed is now a eight by eight scissor lift, like a lab jack, and I've got a piece of stainless steel that I put on top of it just to make it a little bit bigger because this does have an eight by 12 work area. Uh, I have engineered, and I'll show you my knob in a minute, guys. Don't make fun of me. But I have engineered it to where I can actually turn from the side here and I can raise the lab jack without having to take it out. The lab jack is secured to the bottom of the machine. Actually, it's secured through the bottom of the machine to the table. So none of this can move. Nothing can get bumped without this whole shelf moving. But my lab jack actually goes way higher than what it needs to. Uh, hindsight, a uh, six inch would have worked, uh, but I bought the eight because I wanted to make sure it wouldn't rock. I wanted to make sure that uh, everything stayed sturdy, but I think the profile of a six would have probably been a little lower. It probably would have worked just as well. It wouldn't have supported the, the metal as much, but uh, I think it would have worked. So I can turn the knob and lower it back down. So far, I haven't seen any issues with, you know, the focus going across the workspace. You know, not to say that that can't happen, but so far, uh, everything's been staying pretty level. And I got a camera. Uh, the camera does not work great with the small work area. I have, uh, I have said it. it, it does work. It's really nice for trying to fit things in empty places on material. 
but as far as accuracy, uh, from this height, this small of a work area, it's accuracy is lacking. But I, I use it more for just kind of positioning things and seeing how they're going to look and seeing if they're proportionate. So accuracy really wasn't, you know, wasn't a game changer. So I am, I am running one of the eight megapixel uh, cameras that uh, I've running in my other enclosures. And I made me a little arm that comes off this shelf just to hold it in place. There is nowhere good to mount it without mounting it in the lid. And I just didn't want the camera in the lid. That just seemed a little, a little troublesome. Uh, I'll just wait till I get a bigger machine one day. Acrylic, I have learned that it makes it a lot cleaner if you keep it up off of the, the workspace. So typically what I'll do is I'll get me some old blocks of wood or something to put in here and just set my acrylic on top of the wood and try to keep the wood away from the, the burn area so that uh, it doesn't scorch or anything. All right, the way that you have to set the focus with this guy is I'm gonna move it over here above one of my little boards so I don't move my material as much. And I have this gauge and you just simply turn the lab jack until it touches. And once it's touching, once it's touching that ring and it's touching the material, that seems to work. Uh, that was the way that it was intended originally to work. And I was a little concerned that when I changed the nozzle out, it would be different, but I measured everything and it seems to be relatively the same point. So I'm gonna move you around here. I'll show you my little handle that I've engineered, guys. And I literally, this is a little redneck engineering, but don't make fun, it works. All right, guys, so there it is. I got some laser cut pieces of wood that have a quarter inch, uh, basically a quarter inch hex hole to make a handle. Uh, this is actually a uh, swivel extension for a impact wrench. Uh, where it goes into where the knob was on the lab jack, I drilled a hole through there and have a cotter pin in there to hold it so that this can turn the screw that raises and lowers the jack. And then I made sure that there was plenty of lubrication and grease and stuff on that screw so that it's nice and easy to turn and doesn't strip out my little wooden pieces until I can find me a, a proper handle. Uh, it also serves as a good place to keep my little focusing tool, which is on a piece of 550 cord. So there you go, redneck engineering guys. All right. so. What everybody keeps asking me about, clear acrylic. Guys, you can't cut it with a diode, okay? I love my diodes too, but there's some things they just can't do. Clear acrylic is one of those things that they cannot do. So what I'm gonna do, I've got my logo. I brought it over into the workspace here. Uh, and I am going to situate it on that piece of material where I have a, a, a vacant spot using the camera. Like I said, I typically just use the camera to be able to proportionalize my piece that I'm doing and place it on the work area, make sure I'm not gonna be cutting those little blocks of wood and that kind of thing. So that should be clear of everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and home the machine and uh, then I'm gonna frame that out and see where that's going. Downside to the camera being mounted outside is I have to wait until I'm done framing and everything in order to uh, close the lid because you can't really frame with this closed. It's, it's just kind of hard to see but I leave the lid open until I'm ready to deploy the burn. Once I'm ready to deploy the burn, let's close the lid and hit start. Uh, and with this machine, what I typically run is 100 millimeters a second at 40% power and 12 millimeters per second at 50% power for the cut. Uh, the 50% power, I do have to run that three passes, uh, but I have found that it's, it's better to, to, to make multiple passes with lower power uh, with acrylic because if you get too much power, it gets too hot, it melts, and it kind of runs back together, welds itself back together, and then you got to beat it out of there. So this is kind of the setting that I have I've landed on. It seems to do a really good job. The pieces fall out nice and smooth, and I don't have to go beating on anything. So let that run for a second, and uh, we'll see what the results look like. All right, so that wrapped up, and uh, let's see how it turned out. So let me turn the air assist off. That's one thing I forgot to tell you guys. The air assist, I do run it when I'm cutting this stuff. It seems to cut a little bit better. Uh, and this dropped on that third pass. So let me go over here and get me some uh, cleaner and spray that off and clean it right quick. All right guys, so that turned out good. And one good important lesson that I uh, accidentally included in this is why I run air assist with the acrylic. 
Uh, and I'm going to show you this, and I'll try to get me a stick where I can point to where to where it is. Uh, but I had forgot to turn the air assist on because I was too busy filling with the camera. And you can actually see a difference in the engrave where there was no air assist and where there was. So I'm going to show you the difference here. All right. So right there, guys, I don't know if you can see it, but right there is the transition where I remembered to turn the air assist on. Uh, you can, if I can get it to focus, you can see it, especially if you turn it around to the back, it, it, it for some reason, it's actually a little more visible from the back and you can see the lettering. It didn't get quite as good a frosting. Uh, it's, it's a little harder to notice it, but that is where I, that's the transition between no air assist is below and air assist is above. So, uh, the rest of it, uh, all of the, all the rest was done with air assist, and, and I'm zooming in really, really tight, guys. Oh, it's trying to, the camera's trying to get me. Uh, but there it is. And like I said, this is not a very big engrave, so you got to keep in mind. I'm, I'm zooming that way in, so you guys are getting to see detail that you would normally not see uh, just looking at it. Uh, but like I said, I usually, I only use this mostly for clear acrylic. Uh, there are some colors of acrylic that the diodes struggle with. I just go ahead and throw it in here because this thing will slice it really fast really easy and most of the acrylic i get again eight by 12 sheets with the intention of using this machine to do it uh and i've just been doing some upgrades to it because i've got some products coming out that i'm going to be making for some people here locally uh that require me to cut a lot of acrylic and so i went ahead and got the mon port and kind of dressed it up and, and got it ready for duty uh, i had to get the chiller because i don't want to overheat it and that's one of the reasons why i haven't used it as much as i probably could have uh, I didn't really trust my five-gallon bucket uh, radiator. Uh, and after seeing the spiders and dust and stuff that had gotten into the bucket, I'm glad I went ahead and got this one because, like I said, even though this doesn't technically chill the water, uh, it does cool the water. Uh, uses a radiator system similar to what's in your vehicle with a fan to cool the water down to whatever the room temperature is. And hopefully, here soon, the room temperature in the shack will be nice and comfortable. I don't want to, have to worry about the machine uh, overheating when I'm running it. Just something I wanted to share with you. Like I said, I had a, a lot of guys were asking me about the Monport that had Monports, and they were kind of you know, trying to figure out what to do with it, what upgrades needed to be done. And guys, I've done everything I can do to this machine. Okay, uh, anything more than this, I'm just going to have to upgrade to something bigger, better that has the bells and whistles already built in, because I have engineered this thing to be as functional as I think it is possible for such a budget machine but it, it does me a good job for the acrylics uh, like i said i i can't complain because none of the other machines in the building will do what this guy can do with acrylics all right guys thanks for dropping in like i said i just wanted to put this video out there I had several people asking me about my mon port asking me what kind of upgrades i did uh some folks were a little discouraged with some of the shortcomings that i also found with the machine but like I said, a little bit of engineering, a little bit of work, and it, it really is kind of a decent machine for acrylics and those small engraves. Uh, I don't have any major complaints with it currently in its current configuration, but I do have several hours of uh, engineering and working on the, the, the solutions to some of these problems. And people were asking me, hey, what did you do to overcome this? What did you do to overcome that? So I just wanted to share it with you. Uh, eight inch scissor lift and uh, a little engineering guys, and you can actually make it uh, to where the bed will go up and down. Like I said, you're going to limit the depth uh, if you bounce that thing in there permanently as far as putting uh, any kind of rotary or anything like that in there, but that wasn't a concern when I did this. And so I wanted to basically get it to where I could adjust the focus to my liking uh, because I didn't, I, stacking stuff underneath my work pieces just, it got old. Uh, I wanted something that I could do and do it quick and get to the next job. So I hope you like the upgrades. I uh, hope you like the way the machine looks. The uh, nice little green uh, indicator cover that I made with the, uh, the new gauges. I thought that was a good touch. The only downside, guys, the blue, uh, you, you, you can't see what the temperature is with these on. So you have to kind of take them off. But luckily, <laughs> that's not a problem with the fully enclosed CO2. All right, guys, thanks for stopping by. If you haven't already, go, go hit that subscribe button, hit the bell like share you know all that good stuff also don't forget about sunday night lives myself and steve from over at ventari's workshop we get together we talk about lasers talk about upgrades what's coming out the latest and greatest and try to help you guys troubleshoot your machines if you're having issues and work through some of the problems that that are inevitably going to come along 
when you're dealing with these hobby lasers because there are some adjustments and stuff that, that sometimes people overlook. So if you're looking for a resource to try to help you through those little tough patches when you find yourself in one, uh, go over and check out the Sunday Night Live. And there's myself, Steve, and all, countless other guys that are on our laser uh, engraver community group that would be more than willing to give you advice and uh, help you through those. And I got a cat climbing a ladder back there. But until next time, guys, be safe and have a good day.